Hello there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft studio here in Eagle, Idaho. Today I am bringing you episode two of my Bunny Burrow Stamp Set of the Month series. Every week this month, I've been bringing you new ideas with the Bunny Burrow Stamp Set from Trinity Stamps. And today is extra special because I am collaborating with my friend Cassie Trask for this week's video. So Cassie is a friend of mine. She also loves Trinity Stamps. Um, she makes tons of videos. I watch her all the time and she has such cute ideas. So she did an unboxing of some stuff she ordered from Trinity Stamps. One of them was the Bunny Burrow stamp set. And then um, she also got the Mouse House stamp set and said how good they would go together. I had already had the same idea and thought I would use them for this month's video. So I asked Cassie if she would like to collaborate with me, make a card, do a video. So when you're done watching my video with the Bunny Bro and Mouse House stamp sets, you can click over and watch her video and see what she made for even more ideas with the stamp set. Tons of fun. Also, in my Stamp Set of the Month series, I like to do a giveaway. So I'm going to take this moment to announce the winner of last week's card this one right here and that is misty mccauley i hope i said your name right i didn't have it written down but it will appear across the screen and i will send you a message and let you know you're the winner and then if you would like to win the card in today's video all you need to do is leave a comment below i will randomly draw out a winner and announce it on next week's video so let me know what you think of today's card because it's kind of cool it's a z fold slimline card yeah i did tons of stamping and coloring and i also made a cute thing to go with this card so we might as well go ahead and get started enough chit chatting Let's have a look at the Bunny Burrow stamp set in case you hadn't seen it yet. And here are all the markers I used to, to color up my images. I did stamp a bunch right when I opened up the stamp set, like I stamped all the images six times. So I'd have a ton just ready to go and color. They're called adult color sheets. Yeah, they are. This is the Mouse House stamp set, and here are all the markers I used to color in these images, these two stamp sets, and the next one I'm going to show you are all designed by the same artist, so they have that same look and feel. That's how they go really well together. Now, this is the Frappy Camper Perking Spot Stamp Set by Trinity Stamps in collaboration with the Coffee Lovers um, group. And here are the markers I used to color out the camper, the little awning, and the muffin. Those are the only images I'm using from this set. I wanted the camper to look more villagey, campy, Naturey. So I'm going to um, stamp this wood grain background stamp. Do you like my scratch paper there? It's the uh, packing slip from my Trinity Stamps order. One of them. I keep ordering from them. I can't stop. Okay, so now I am cutting out the camper to paper piece this wood grain onto my camper. So I, you saw my camper was colored orange down the middle. So the wood grain gray on gray cardstock will be above and below that. So I'll glue those into place and when paper piecing I always cut out my image on the black line. That is the tip for paper piecing and it looks so cute with the orange right through the middle there. I love it. Isn't it cute? All right so I needed to just color in a little bit of that window frame to complete this and then I'll attach that awning. Isn't it adorable? And now I'm bringing in one of the Trinity Stamps slimline die sets. This is called the Great Outdoors Borders and Builders. So I am die cutting two fences, two hills, and two rows of grass. I didn't end up using any of the trees or the birds in this card, so I will get to those because they're super cute. I'm adding a little bit of Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink to the tops of all of my grassy and green pieces, and that will just give them a little more depth. Now my card front measures eight and three fourths by three and three fourths. The Z fold portion is the same size, and it is scored at four and a fourth and eight and three fourths. That way it will create the Z fold top piece to this card to extend 
the scene on the front of this card since I am using three stamp sets. <laughs> so now we need to add some sky to this card. So I am using Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide Ink mostly because it's brand new to me and so I wanted to play with it because I'm excited to have a new Distress Oxide Ink color. I think I mentioned in a previous video, a recent video, that I am just gradually building up my collections of all the things. So I don't have every Distress Oxide ink pad, but I really would like to. So, you know, a few here and a few there. I sprayed that with water, and then I'm also splattering it with some watercolor from my Arteza watercolor set. I love splatter. If you're new here, you should know that about me. And so I'm gonna splatter my green pieces as well. And I love this technique with the watercolor and then using a window sheet, it gives me that really fine splatter that I want. All right, so I'm gonna glue my hill onto my card base, or my card front, sorry, then my grass, but only putting glue across the bottom so then I can attach my fence, tucking it in behind the grass. So it just barely sticks down into the grassy area and I am using liquid glue for all of this. Now for the uh, Z-fold portion, I need to cut these pieces in half, so I'm just laying it on there, snipping them apart. Um, for the hill, I felt more comfortable making a snip and then taking that to my paper trimmer and cutting it in half. And now I can glue the halves on, just leaving the score line exposed so it's easier to fold this card. If you cover it, it's gonna be really bulky and it's not gonna lay very flat. So those are my tips, yeah. All right, then I'll tuck that little fence in and I'll repeat the same exact thing on that second side of the Z fold. I will have a half inch flap left over. That is the piece that will connect the two backgrounds together. So there you have the Z fold piece right there. I'm going to attach this to my other half with some double stick tape and liquid adhesive. So I'll get to that later, but wanted you to know I used both. So now I'm gonna greatly speed up all the uh, adhering process. <laughs> so many images. What I did is I just took them all out, I laid them out on my card where I wanted them to be, and even before this started, I kind of sketched out where I thought things would go on the panels of this card. I really, in a sense, have four sections. There's the, the base of the card has a section that will show when the card is laying flat and a part with the camper that was covered. And then the same thing with the Z Fold. I have one that shows when the card is closed and one that shows when it's open. So I just kind of tried to create four little scenes for this card. And I am using sentiments from the Mouse House set. It says, hey fungi, have a nice day. So there I am putting liquid glue onto that little flap that connects the two pieces. And then I will attach that entire piece to a slimline card that measures nine inches by eight inches and scored at four inches. This is the largest size card I can make that fits in the slimline envelopes that I have, which I got at the Dollar Tree. All right, so now I am adding white highlights. I already added them to my stamped images, but wanted to add them to the camper, which I had not yet done because some of those pieces were um, paper based. All right, so now I'm using the die for the bunny burrow to die cut a yellow piece of cardstock that will be the inside of my door. Now, in the last video, I did a brown ink blended piece. I like that much better, not gonna lie, but today it's yellow because I have yellow behind the window and I used the die cut pieces around the bunny burrow house. So you can color your bunny burrow house or you can die cut the little um, rocks that go around the door and the window and the little stepping stones. So that's what I did. Also in the finished pictures of this card, you'll see I added a few more stepping stones to the bunny burrow house and the mouse house. I like the little stepping stones. They're really cute. I use the third saying from Mouse House, so thankful for you and cheese. 
on the inside of the card and kind of put that in a different spot than normal. So that's the Z Fold card. Now let's make the something cute that goes with it. This is the Gable Favor box from Fun Stamper Journey. And I wanted to show you that you can die cut it from a half sheet of cardstock, even though the die cut line for the flap that adheres the box pieces together will be hanging off. You still have enough flap to put them together. So you don't need to waste paper. You can get one box out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Whew, I felt like an auctioneer that was so fast. Okay, so now I'm ink blending my little box with the same two colors that I used on the card and splattering them with water and watercolor so that it will totally match my card because I love matchy matchy things. So we'll let those dry and when they are dry, I'm gonna adhere them together also using score tape and liquid glue. I really want my box to stay together and putting liquid glue on top of score tape gives you that wiggle room in case like, ah, that didn't work out. You have a second before you press down to scoot it around. So the box sides are put together. I'm gonna fold in the top because this will help me keep the bottom of the box squared up when I put it together. So I put glue on the small flaps, folded in one flap that had no glue, and then the top flap folded in that did have a line of glue. And I'm gonna hold that for a second, which is really a minute. And then I'm gonna use my crease tool to press down the bottom. And then I set a heavy block in there and just gave it a few minutes to do its thing. Then I came back and added these pieces, just like I did to the card, a little white picket fence. And it almost goes around the whole card, but I did need a partial. So I cut off a little partial to stick on there and then I can save that extra piece in the pack with my dies in case I will need it again in the future. And then I'll do the same thing with the grass, wrapping it around the bottom of this box. And you kind of just have to be patient. It's hard though, and just hold it down. It, it's hard, I know. So then I add the little extra piece to finish it off. And then we'll go ahead and add some stamped images to this. I colored up some images very similar to what I did before with maybe a few variations. I did a wet red window frame for this bunny burrow. Um, here's my mouse house. Gluing those two pieces on, I popped up the mouse, I popped up the flower, I added a little the little mouse to the side because it's just a little panel there, but I thought it would be cute to do a little something on the sides. And this would be a really good gift box for like a new neighbor. You could fill it with some chocolates and welcome them to the neighborhood, right? All right, so then we'll pop up some more critters on the front. This is gonna be the front. The bunny burrow side I decided was the front and the mouse house side was the back, but I like that it has something interesting on all four of the sides. Added my little hedgehog and a little fly and it's all stamped up. Now I'm going to create a tag. This is just a piece of scrap cardstock that I cut to one and a half by three and a fourth, I believe, and am using my happy stamp set and embossing my sentiment using that same Mermaid Lagoon ink and some clear embossing powder. So it says happy, and then I stamp the word day right below that. I'm gonna use some leftover grass from wrapping around the box to go across the bottom of my tag. So I'll glue that in place and then trim off any excess that hangs off just like that. Oh, I had a little glue seeping out. When you have glue seeping out, my tip is to pick it up with a paper towel. My friend Georgie taught me that. All right, so now I'm adding a little ladybug and flower to finish this off. I thought I was gonna use those Trinity Stamps confetti pieces, but I felt like it was just too much for this little tag. So I put some glitter on there because I am making a shaker tag with my fuse tool. I used it in last week's video to create a bookmark and I loved it. I've seen lots of shaker tags made with the fuse tool. So I decided to give it a go. Now this is plastic you can buy from We Are Memory Keepers to create your shaker fused elements. You can also use page protectors. So 
either way they work and you just gotta let this tool heat up and then I'm using the ruler that came with it to fuse all of the sides and then I realized I didn't quite get the first side I must not have let it heat up enough so I had to go over that again and then it was good to go next you want to trim off the excess cutting um, up against the fused line very easy to do but since I used glitter in here I don't want to punch a hole in it or the glitter is going to escape so here's what I did to finish off my box I used this um, cocoa powder gingham ribbon from fun stampers journey and I thought it was just a fun um, contrast and colors with the blue and the gingham is I don't know it's little woodland -y, right it goes with my little critter village right so then I took a needle and poked a hole in the area of the hole of the tag and threaded some twine through it and then I will tie that around the ribbon to finish off my tag and those are my two projects featuring the bunny burrow stamp set and the mouse house stamp set and I snuck in that frappy camper as well I hope you like the idea of the z-fold slimline card like as if a slimline card was not enough room to create a scene we might as well double that and make a z fold card <laughs> so if you're like me and you have to fit all the things on one card here's an idea for you i hope that you've enjoyed today's video and maybe learned something new you can see another creative idea with the, these stamp sets over on Cassie Trask's YouTube channel. I have it linked for you in the description box below. I appreciate you stopping by if you are interested in any of the things that I used. I have them linked for you below. I will be back again very soon with another video just for you. Happy stamping! Bye!